Hello everyone and welcome to 40 Questions. My name is Stephen Walker and tonight I'm interviewing Owen Daly. Hello Owen. Hi Stephen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, so let's begin with where are you from? I'm from the Republic of Ireland. The Republic of Ireland. That's right. And where is the Republic of Ireland? Republic of Ireland is in Western Europe. It's directly to the west of Great Britain. Okay. And so Ireland, there are two Irelands, basically. Is that That's correct? That's right. Yeah, we have the island of Ireland. Right. <clears throat> and that's split into two countries. Okay. Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. and Republic of Ireland, which is a sovereign state. Um, most people just say Ireland when referring to Republic of Ireland. Right. And you are from the southern that's part correct. of the island. That's right. And where where are you from? I'm from where were you born? a city called Dublin, which Double. is also the capital city okay. of Ireland. All right. So <clears throat> the nationality for people that do not know, what is the nationality of Ireland of it's, people from Ireland? We'd say I am Irish. You're Irish. That's right. So you got the Irish people and the Irish music and Irish food right. and so on. Yep. And the population of Ireland, the 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 total island? The total population of the island is a little over six million people. Okay. And there's about 1.75 in Northern Ireland, and then the Republic of Ireland is about 4.5 million. About 4.5. And you said Dublin is the capital of Southern Ireland. That's right. Uh, what is the population of Dublin? Dublin is what we call a county as okay. well as a city. Um, the population of the whole county is about two million people. About two million. Right. Quite so a you, large you, city actually. Yeah, and you can see that like a large part of the population of the country is all in that small area. So. Right. Okay. Uh, moving into unit two, which is shapes, sizes, and appearances. Question six is about the flag. And what color is the flag from Ireland? The Irish flag, <coughs> we call it the tricolor. Okay. Which maybe you can guess from the sound of it means three colors. Mm -hmm. Tricolor. It's three stripes green, white, and gold. But green, white, and gold? Yeah, but you'll see it as green, white, and yellow, or green, white, and orange. Okay, I always, I always thought it was orange. It's, but, it's, but we, you, when we're describing it, we say gold, Okay. But when it's in pictures, orange or gold. So or it's tricolor, three colors, yep. and question seven is the appearance of the flag. What does the flag look like? So it's three colors. Three colors, uh, three straight lines, green, white and then gold and so or they're vertical they are vertical, vertical yeah. stripes <clears throat> uh, moving forward into question eight and question nine appearances appearances of the irish people what would you say is the typical appearance of most irish men and irish women right well if you see any movie where mm. there's an irish character which you often do in movies and TV shows. Um, we have a stereotypical appearance, and it's not very far away from the actuality. Okay, okay. but I'll talk about the stereotype first. The stereotype is that uh, very white, pale skin mm. with a lot of freckles. Freckles are small dots, uh, yeah. brown dots on the skin, uh, and red hair is also associated with Irishness and that plays into uh, characteristics about our personality such as fiery, passionate, uh, hot-tempered, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. The reality is not that far away. We do have a lot of uh, white-skinned, uh, nearly everybody is kind of pale, we don't get a huge amount of sunshine in right. Ireland, so we haven't evolved to to deal with that <laughs> don't, very don't well. Don't need the pigment. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, so you will find on the days when we do get sunshine, uh, Irish people, maybe more, certainly me, and maybe more than other nationalities, we tend to get sunburned yeah. quite easily. We need to use our factor 50 sunscreen. <laughs> um, 
and we also have the uh, pale or not pale the fair hair fair hair say. so blonde, a lot of a lot of blondy light, hair light brown mm -hmm. light brown Reddish. some like golden white right. blonde hair okay. as well especially among the girls right on question 10 minorities what what are some minorities that are living in ireland well for an awful long time Ireland was a very homogenous country. Yeah. That means we didn't have many immigrants, we didn't have many minorities, and we didn't have people who looked different to us, basically. Right. Uh, when I was young, it would have been very rare for me to see a non white person on okay. the street. Extremely rare. And these days? These days, we, we have a lot more. Um, during the early to mid 1990s Ireland had a huge economic growth mm. that is now referred to as the Celtic Tiger okay it was a period when some multinational con companies such as Microsoft and mm -hmm. uh, uh, other computer companies uh, moved in and that changed Ireland from a kind of an agrarian economy to a more so from farming in into more tech the right into a tech based yeah. and of course that raised the standard of living it raised the the salary around uh, and Ireland and, and more people and more people started to, to come in immigrating. Like, uh, as as well as professionals there were also around that time in Europe there were some wars in the Balkans for example so we had some uh, like Yugoslavian what was used to be called Yugoslavia uh, immigrants from those countries there were also refugees from African countries such as Nigeria and Rwanda okay. and so on like that so those people are still very much a minority there, there are also Asians now now mostly Chinese okay. uh, would be among them. All right. Uh, unit three is about food tastes and ingredients. What what is a traditional food that is eaten in Ireland? Well, traditionally we have been a poor country. Yeah. So our food, for many hundreds of years, revolved around the humble potato. Right. Okay. Well, I, I did know that. Yeah. The so a lot of stews a mm. lot of soups and a lot of uh, like mashed potato where right. the potato is squashed down uh, we call that col cannon it's when it's col mixed cannon yeah when it's mixed with herbs okay um, I I would say like there's bacon and cabbage is also a, a very famous kind of Irish food but I would say the most famous would be an Irish stew Irish stew or perhaps coddle which coddle? Maybe most people don't know about okay then that sounds good. Okay. Can you, can you just, can you tell us <clears throat> what are the ingredients of coddle? A coddle is very similar to a stew. Um, a stew would be like a meat plus whatever vegetables you have on hand, mm. usually potato and carrots. Um, coddle takes that a little bit further in that the meat is sausage and bacon. Okay. So pork. Yep. Um, so you cut up your potatoes into little cubes, you cut up your carrots, throw them all in a pot of water, get them boiling, and then you put in some sausage, you, like you can cut it up or you can use small sausages. You put in some bacon as well, um, add some stock if you have okay. that, some herbs, and uh, just let that sit for a while, and it, it's a really hearty dish. Okay. Um, cheap to make mm. which was important back when right. families didn't have much money and they hearty. needed to feed a hearty people. meal a hearty meal yeah when you came in from the cold and rain weather that was a a nice hot meal yeah, to warm good, your good, warm that's a your good word. and so how does coddle taste i would say the main taste is salty uh, okay which is due to the sausage yeah. and also the bacon yeah. and you would probably add some salt as well mm -hmm. and uh, we would put in stock cubes or if some people would have their own stock, which is usually salty as well. And um, the stock is a beef or a pork, a beef pork, or pork based meat, yeah. meat stock. Yeah. And your, and your mother, would mm. she make this when yeah, you were a young She youngster? would make that once so, every couple of weeks. Okay. So. so when she made it, do you remember what, what does it smell like, the, the coddle? You Can you remember me, it? Making me homesick now, yeah. thinking about it. Yeah, Mouth watering? Yeah, I would come through the door and I would know straight away right. that there was a coddle happening. Okay. And uh, 
What would it smell like? I mean, you get the you get the smell of bacon. Mm. You get the smell. The sausage mingles in there nicely. Um, it just smells warm and inviting. And yeah. if you're hungry, coming in out of cold weather, yeah, there's nothing better than a nice big bowl full of coddle. Well, you're talking me into it. How about a bit of coddle <laughs> after the interview? Yeah, I'll make some up for you. <laughs> well, and, just and as, as an aside, like my wife who's Korean, okay. that, that is her favorite exactly. Irish dish. Okay. And whenever we visit Ireland, she... Well, I'll definitely take you up on yeah, she, you making me some coddle she, one day. She nags my mother until she, you know, until she makes them for us. So. Right. And, and the texture, that's the, the next question, question 15. What would you say the texture of this is? Well, you get like a, you get a couple of different textures. Yeah. It's soupy, uh -huh. so that watery. Yeah, so that's a kind of a watery taste that you can you can just drink it. Mm -hmm. um, also, the potato and the carrots are usually cooked for a long time. And so cabbage as well, you said? Uh, no, not cabbage. cabbage. No cabbage? No, just, okay. Uh, just carrots. Well, I mean, you can throw yeah, in anything, sure, anything. But it, depending what people want. But I, I would say traditionally, or the way I grew up with it, uh, no cabbage. But okay. um, I would say the potatoes and cabbage, uh, potatoes and carrots, sorry, they tend to be a bit mushy. Mushy. Yeah, because yeah, okay. they, they've been cooked for quite a long time yeah. in this sort of soup. Mm -hmm. So they're very soft and almost kind of melt in your yeah. mouth. As, as you, as you mushy, eat that's a good word. Yeah. Uh, the, and the meat. The sausage is kind of chewy. Mm -hmm. um, and a little bit, uh, along with the bacon, a little bit stringy. Okay. You could say, because the bacon would be... Uh, it depends on what kind of bacon you use, but we would have streaky bacon uh, as well as back bacon. Streaky bacon is streaky a streaky bacon is, a, is what streaky bacon is. I think what North Americans call bacon. Oh, okay, it's, it's quite fatty. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, that's whereas back bacon. back bacon is very lean. Okay, a bit um, more meaty. And if you boil it for a long time, the soup can get kind of gloopy. Gloopy. Yeah. Can you describe gloopy? I would say it's. Uh, what we would probably call like glutinous, I think glutinous. would be the proper word, like a like a juke. It's a popular word these Korean. days. Juke, yeah. So where the watery, the, yeah, the watery thick thick thickens lumpy. a bit. Could be lumpy or it could be just uh, starchy, I okay. suppose. My mother would always make enough for at least two days yeah. and yeah. on the second day it tasted even better. That's so. right. Uh, moving into unit four weather seasons and landscapes question 16 what is the landscape like if we maybe start from the north and go to the south um i mean maybe better would be to start from the west then let's go, to go the from west to east so if you look at ireland on a map yeah. you'll see that the western side faces onto the atlantic ocean and because of thousands of years of having that ocean there it has eroded away mm. and it has created a very kind of stark landscape okay. so we have a lot of cliffs on our western coast and some of those cliffs are spectacular right. and they are a point of interest for tourists mm -hmm. to visit there as you move inland moving towards the east you come into farming country it's a lot of flat land that is being used to farm like dairy farms and uh, also for vegetables and that kind of thing there is also some areas that are used for peat which is a kind of an how to describe peat it's similar to coal it's an over time the earth and pressure has formed these kind of we call them bogs they're almost like marshlands. The wetland. Yeah, mm -hmm. similar to that, but I would say not as wet as, as those areas. And the what you can dig up there, we call it peat. And so because the Irish nice. traditionally use this to heat their homes. Yeah, it can be quite smoky and right. it's not very good for the environment either. So yeah, okay. Uh, most people are using it. And so, so yeah, that's the, that's the west and the center. And then as we move to the east, you kind of, you run out of 
farming land and it becomes a kind of like you move into residential and commercial areas. So the majority of people are living on the eastern end of That's the island? That's right, yeah. Okay. So, well, I, I mean, Dublin is closest. Dublin is right on the east coast. Okay. It's also the closest to United Kingdom, who mm -hmm. is our main trading partner. The so coast, the eastern well. coast is not as... Uh, it's certainly, no, it's not as rugged. And if you look at a map, you'll see like the western coast is very like jutted out or jagged yet okay um, and the east coast is more kind of almost straight down it's very okay. smooth so all right that shows and you so it, it goes in down action. into the sea it's a it's kind of a yeah we do a have landscape like some cliffs on the east right. but not as many as and not and as are stark the beaches as the would they be more over on the east coast there are beaches on both sides yeah. and al although to be honest nothing there are no beaches in ireland that are anything to like you wouldn't want to no. visit them because they're beautiful not the white beaches. sand no and, we, yeah. we we certainly don't get that and we, we do get sandy beaches but they're not nearly as beautiful as maybe some of the other people right. who have talked about uh their countries in these videos but we well, do a beach is a beach yeah that's true and we do have like the sea can be quite mesmerizing okay and uh, moving into question 17, seasons. How many seasons are in Ireland? Theoretically, yeah. we have four. Okay. But in reality, there is very little difference or certainly there is no stark contrast between one season and the next. Is that right? So, Winter moves very, very gradually into spring, okay. which moves very gradually into summer. So, mm. uh, whereas in some other countries, like Korea, for example, we can almost we can see winter change to spring in very you know, in a week. Yeah, very yeah. distinct. Um, in Ireland, not so much. And Ireland also doesn't have extreme weather, so our winter is not very cold, but All our right. summer is not very hot. Okay, um, that's interesting. Do, do you receive snow? I mean, I saw snow maybe three or four times in 20 years wow. when okay. I was growing up. Um, I'd, I'd also say it can rain on any day of the year. Okay. Um, like people will say, they'll often describe our weather as moist and variable and honestly it can, you could wake up and it could be sunny but it could be raining an hour later. Right very hard to predict our weather it mm. changes quickly yeah. and um, the, the the advantage of an Irish climate is it never gets very very cold and it also no stream right and in the summer we also don't experience like high humidity or anything like oh, that that's like, good exactly. and so can you tell our audience a little bit more maybe about an Irish summer what was the weather like in a typical day, the temperature would be between about 18 and 25 degrees. Okay, Celsius. Yeah, Celsius. Yeah. We rarely, I, I think the record temperature ever reported is like 33 degrees. And, and, it, and it could still rain on any, on it, any it given day. It could day rain on any given summertime. day, but I would say we would get maybe four or five good beach days per summer. Wow, not too um, many. Not too many, no. Yeah. And so generally, if one of those days happens, the it's country kind of comes a, to a, a stack. Yeah, it's everybody <laughs> get on the train and head out to the beach. <laughs> I was lucky to grow up in a town yeah, okay. like on the Dublin coast is, with the beach. But, Dublin's uh, right on the coast. Yeah. Um, the other kind of maybe difference between some other countries is that we would get, like in the summer, the day is much longer than it is in the winter. Uh, so. Okay. In northern northern latitude. Yeah, so it wouldn't get dark until like 9, 9.30 right, okay. in the evening. Whereas yeah. I find in Korean summers, it's probably around 7.30. Mm -hmm. So children in the summer tend to play out in the streets until 9, 9.30 in the yeah. evening. And then their mothers are calling them in. So There you go. Um, calling them in for the coddle. <laughs> exactly. 9.30. And, and a little cuddle as well. <laughs> Maybe. Question 19 is natural disasters. What natural disasters, if any, do, does Ireland uh, experience? Well, we're very lucky in that yeah. we don't get any natural disasters. We're not near any 
uh, plate lines or anything no like earthquakes. that. No so earthquakes. Never had an earthquake. No volcanoes. No volcanoes anywhere close. Although like, I guess Iceland, which Ireland is sometimes yeah. confused for, it does have some volcanoes. <laughs> but uh, no, nothing like that. Uh, we did recently have a hurricane. Yeah. Just about a month ago or That's two right. weeks ago. Um, 2017 was, September. Yeah. October. October. So. Yeah. That was the only very rare before that. The only hurricane I can remember was I think 1985. So, right. but you get rain. We do. So flooding. Flooding, I suppose, is is common, but nothing that people can't deal with. Okay, like it's, and it's what people are used to. It's not an it's not a mountainous country. Not really. Not really. No landslides or... No, landslides would be unheard of as well. well then, then obviously, if you get rain almost every day, no droughts, windstorms, no. dust storms, nothing. Nothing like that. Well, no, there you go. The luck of the Irish. Maybe the that's, natural, maybe the that's natural where disasters that phrase are came from. Quite a lucky little island. Yeah, I would honestly. say, you mentioned flooding. I would say that's probably the most common okay, of yeah. the disasters, but even still, it would mold. Be, it would be very rare for <laughs> water mold, to I guess, go could be a natural disaster. Over a car, even right. that, that would be a very, it'll be a rare flood, it right. would be a big flood. Okay, um, holidays. What would you say, Owen, is an important holiday in Ireland? The most important holiday by far is yeah. Christmas. Okay. Um, we don't have Thanksgiving, so Christmas is probably the only time when family members all make an extra special effort to get together. Right. Um, but we also have several smaller holidays. I mean, tell, tell us about maybe one, one more. Well, the most famous one, maybe around the world, is St. Patrick's Day. Right which is probably bigger in other countries than it is in Ireland. It's I've heard that. And when is St. Pat's Day? When is St. Patrick's March 17th. March 17th. Every year. It's, it's in recognition of our patron saint, mm -hmm. who is St. Patrick, right. who, according to legend, came to Ireland in the 7th or 8th century and brought Christianity to the people there and kind of show them the error of their ways yeah. and save their souls. Um, he's also credited with getting rid of all the snakes, which... So you have no snakes in Ireland? We don't have any snakes, no. Same Thanks, as, thanks same, Patrick same as New one. Zealand, actually. We actually, again, this, you might say, look of the Irish, we yeah. don't have any dangerous insects or animals at all. We don't have any wild tigers or bears or we don't have any poisonous spiders right. or yeah, we don't even have mosquitoes really I mean people say they've seen them that's but I, I never saw one I've never that's seen that's a that's I would say that's quite lucky yeah I've never seen a cockroach even right. although people said but you do have the English cockroach we do have the English bothering us <laughs> to the west okay Owen uh, moving into unit 5 which is ports transportation and accommodation and question 21 when we fly into Ireland what is one of the main international airports in your country we only have two or three airports that you can fly internationally into okay. but the main one is Dublin right. International Airport uh, the vast majority of flights would go there and a, certainly if you're coming from any distance you would go to Dublin for sure okay and once we arrive in Dublin International Airport, yep. uh, what are some modes of transportation that we can uh, look forward to taking once we leave the airport? I don't like to say it, but Irish public transportation is not very good compared okay. with some other countries. Right. That's um, interesting. It's also quite expensive. Okay. Of course, you can get buses, uh, trains, um, there's a, a thing called the Lewis in Dublin city centre, which is kind of like an electric tram. That's interesting to take, but to be honest, none of them really solve the problem of getting people from A to B mm -hmm. in, a, in a fast and cheap manner. <coughs> we don't have any bullet train, so if you're traveling intercity, you'll travel on a fairly slow train. Okay. Um, it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. 
and the it's not always as clean or as comfortable right. as you would be used to in some other countries. And so most people just have their own personal car? A lot of people would just drive their own car, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, question 23 is hotels. What would you say is a nice hotel to stay at in Dublin or yeah, anywhere in Ireland basically? Uh, there are many different hotels around the country that are interesting for their own various reasons. Tell us one, one specific hotel. One of the most famous would can... be uh, Bunratty Castle. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that is a converted castle. Right. Okay, and Ireland has several castles still standing from the Middle Ages mm -hmm. that have been, a lot of them have been changed into hotels. Okay. It's a sumptuous Have you been there place. before? Uh, just on the grounds, I've never stayed there. And so the next question is amenities. What amenities would be offered at this castle? Do you know of any? Well, uh, I mean, it would have all the normal uh, bells and whistles yeah. that you would get at a, a, any five-star hotel, like a swimming pool and a fitness center and so on. It, Breakfast uh, also, and yeah, nice, sure. nice it, restaurants. It has uh, huge lands around it where you can do horseback riding and okay. hiking and uh, cycling around through there. And uh, I think they also have a golf course wow. attached to their hotel. Wow, Bunratty. Bunratty Castle, Bunratty. yeah. Sounds nice. Uh, the last question of Unit 5, question 25, is uh, the exchange rate. So first, what currency is used in Ireland? We use the Euro. The Euro. For our audience, do you know what the exchange rate is these days in the uh, doll American dollars? To the euro, to American dollar, it would be slightly stronger than an American yeah. dollar. Um, about a dollar twenty, maybe, but between a dollar okay. ten and a dollar twenty, that's usually where it hovers. Anyway, right. yeah. um, I will say most American tourists find Ireland expensive. Yeah. Okay. Unit six is greetings, gestures, and customs. And so when I or any of our viewers venture into Ireland, what would be a good greeting that is used throughout the country? I, I mean, people just say hello or hi, that's yeah. normal. Um, if you want to speak in the Irish language, you Which can say, is we, we call it Irish or Gaelica. Um, you can say Gaelica. Gaelica, yeah. Not Gaelic? It, it is Gaelic. But Gaelic, it, but Gaelic is the, the English, English word for Gaelica. Gaelica, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and so give us a Gaelica greeting. Uh, we, we usually just say Diazit, which means, literally, it means God be with you. One more time. Diazit. Diazit? Yeah. Dia is God. Dit is yeah. kind of with you. All right. Um, but most people, uh, I mean, if you know somebody, we, we actually say, how are you? How are you? Which is how just, are you? how are you? It's just, how are you? like if you're spelling it H-O-W-Y-A, it's how just a, a shortening or a quickening right. of how are you. Yeah. So how are you? you know, how, like are you? That, how are you? Um, most people, like in my hometown, if you're not on speaking terms with somebody, if you're not very friendly with them, you would still nod as you okay. walk by, as you, you see somebody on the street, mm, like that or whatever, like that. And Recognition. That, that, that's all it takes, yeah. Recognition. Just a kind of a friendly nod, yeah. Okay. And question 27 is gestures. Body gesture, hand gesture, what are some polite gestures that are used throughout Ireland? Um, I don't know if we have any polite gestures per se. We don't or common gestures, you know. Yeah, we we don't do like the two-handed thing or uh, anything like that. Um, I mean the nod, the nodding to someone. The, the that would nodding, be one. the nodding would be polite. Um, shaking hands is common in Ireland. Shaking hands is, is very common, and it's, yeah. and it's generally done with the right yeah. hand. Um, and we a also, nod. Uh, if you've seen. A video for Italy or Spain or if you've seen that on TV you might see that a lot of people kiss hello uh -huh. they kiss and they hug when they meet yeah. hello that is also common in Ireland is but it? I would say not as common as those Mediterranean countries and more so among closer friends um, to a stranger or someone you're meeting for the first time uh, 
we probably wouldn't even shake hands unless it's a business meeting or a, a formal introduction. Right. Normally we just say, hey, like that. Hey, so. okay. And so we have polite gestures moving into impolite. Question 28, what are some gestures that are impolite in Ireland that we would not want to do? Um, well, probably most people know about giving the finger. Yeah, the middle one. Yeah, now that is not very common in Ireland. But okay. Something that when I was growing up was giving two fingers. Can I do it now? Or? Sure. Yeah, so I mean, that's what we're, we're here so to learn. That. So basically in America, this means peace, but in Europe, the opposite. Yeah. The back of now, the hand. Nobody like that would also be peace. Ireland. But that Ireland. Would, this is peace. Hey, peace. Yeah, that peace. would be peace. Yeah. Like but yeah. this is that is up yours, basically. Yeah, this so, is, um, so I do find it amusing. I sometimes see people on TV doing that, and yeah, they, they've, obviously it has no meaning for them, but it's that's, uh, quite that's humorous. Why for the rest of us. This is a question that is good to talk about. Sure. You know? um, so yeah, don't do that. To, if you're ordering yeah. two drinks, order them like that. <laughs> yeah. Don't order them like that so much. Yeah. Question twenty nine is talking about customs, and so what would you say are some customs that are practiced in Ireland? Um, I, I mean, we, we, we do have some customs, that's for sure. Um, yeah. Some that might be different to your to the people watching this video. For example, we always wear shoes in the house. You we, do wear we, shoes we, in we the house. We don't okay. take off our shoes. Um, even though most of our houses are carpeted. Yeah, isn't and that strange? If you think that's a dirty habit, I happen to agree <laughs> yeah. with you. Um, I personally don't like wearing shoes in the house. It feels <laughs> uncomfortable and strange, but uh, Irish yeah. people will wear shoes in the house. Same and as in America. When I was a child, my mother would often give out to me yeah. for yeah. dragging in dirt into the house. <laughs> On your carpet. Yeah. Um, Any more? Irish people, uh, as a culture, a lot of our culture revolves around alcohol mm. and we would have certain sayings and certain blessings and okay. so on that are used uh, that can only be shared over a drink so generally when we drink uh, instead of saying cheers we say slauncha slauncha so we'll drift up our glass and say slauncha 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 means like uh, good health okay which right. is kind of ironic to say when you're having alcohol, but still. <laughs> well, a little bit of alcohol is yeah, healthy, is, as uh, they say. Perhaps. Uh, the last question of Unit 6 is question 30, and that is about religion. We touched upon this a little bit before with uh, St. Patrick, but what religions are practiced uh, throughout Ireland? Um, Ireland is mostly the Catholic religion yeah. mm -hmm. and that goes back in history quite right. a long time. Yeah. Um, what other religions are practiced in um, Ireland? There are other know? Christian religions such as Protestantism is probably the, the second biggest. Right. Um, there would be some Jewish people there. Uh, there would be a very small amount of Buddhists. Okay. But uh, the atheist movement is growing bigger and bigger all the okay. time. Yeah, yeah. I noticed uh, that there's a lot of that because one of the things to know because Ireland, Ireland is divided right. because of religion. Yeah, that's true. And Protestants and the Catholics. Yeah, like basically Protestant people didn't feel they could get a fair you know, share underneath uh, a Catholic government. The Catholic mm. Church has had a strong influence on every government for the last 100 years. And even a lot of schools now, you can't go to that school unless you've been baptized mm. in the Irish faith and the Catholic faith. So they wouldn't allow you to attend the school. They wouldn't allow you to attend the school. Right. So that is a major problem these days wow. and uh, a lot of parents don't want to baptize their children or don't want to give them mm. any religion but some of them are forced to because the only Education. schools in their you gotta, district you gotta be educated, uh, I guess, huh? require Catholicism. Yeah. Mm. Moving into Unit 7 on landmarks, activities and things to do. Question 31, where is a good place to go sightseeing in Southern Ireland? I mean, the best place is Dublin City. Yeah. Um, purely because it's 
kind of small it's very concentrated so in a small area that you can walk around you can see a lot of places mm -hmm. now most of the interesting parts in Dublin City are the architecture okay because a lot of old buildings right. are still standing so there are buildings that are four or five hundred years old such as Trinity College Dublin which is a very famous old university mm -hmm. in central Dublin and beautiful building really amazing campus just when you compare it to modern universities it's such a just an awe-inspiring right. building to be around um, <coughs> One more? There are other places in Dublin, like mostly museums and art galleries. Like it's a very cultural city compared to, like you're not going, we have no tall buildings, right? The, the tallest building is 22 stories. Okay, it's they're not very tall. It's not very tall no. at all. So you're not going to be taking an elevator up somewhere and Just getting this the view. And yeah, like you're not going to do Empire State Building or anything like that. But uh, for museums in, in terms of history and art uh, it's one of the best cities okay, in Europe Dublin. That kind of thing yeah all right and question 32 famous landmarks what would be some famous landmarks that uh, we can see in Ireland uh, staying in Dublin I would say that Trinity College Trinity is College. one of them okay. um, they're on the, the Dublin is Dublin city is split into the north and the south based on the river that runs through the middle which, which is, is very common it's called the Liffey the Liffey yeah you'll find most European capitals have a right. river running yeah. through it um, on the north side the most famous landmark is called the spire which is a very tall needle into Steeple. the sky it's a good place for meeting your friend right. or whatever because you meet can say hey spire. meet at the spire just gotcha. like that yeah um also close to the spire is a famous building called the gpo which stands for general post office this is an amazing looking old building that you would never believe is something so humble as a post office hmm. yeah it's also very important in our history because it's the place where in 1916 uh, James Connolly proclaimed our independence against the British right. who at that time were okay. in charge of Ireland so um, that's also a very beautiful historical building. significance yeah um, there are the cliffs of Moher which are famous cliffs on the west coast okay um, and one go. more the Blarney Stone the Blarney Where Stone is it's in Southern Ireland. Yeah. It's uh, a, a castle, and uh, if you haven't seen that, basically you go along and you have to contort yourself, yeah, you lean to back, lean backwards. It's a little bit scary if you've never done it, and you have to kiss that stone. And what? Why? Why is that? Why would you kiss a stone? What if was you kiss that stone, well, the legend is that it gives you what we call the gift of the gab, which, which means you'll be uh, very good at speaking and you'll be a charming person. Okay. Okay. and speak well and so have you have you kissed the stone oh, i haven't actually you haven't. I, I thought it was very unhygienic so i, <laughs> yeah. I chose not to quite a few lips have touched that a stone lot, a lot of mouths have touched that stone some people with <laughs> sickness and viruses yeah. who knows what you're getting there so uh, more than the gift of gab yeah so. go and go and find a different stone to right. kiss that instead <laughs> all right moving into question 33 activities what are some activities that people do or that you enjoyed doing as a child or in um, Ireland? Like I say, with the weather being so variable yeah. and basically untrustworthy, it's hard to plan anything in advance. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily have as much of an outdoor culture right. as say countries like uh, Australia or New Zealand or even the United States. Right. Um, people play a lot of sports. Uh, soccer obviously is a big one rugby is another mm -hmm. big one we have our own sports called Gaelic sports that uh, are only played in Ireland although they are also played by wherever you'll find Irish people abroad such as Australia or New York Boston okay. and Chicago those kind of areas London um, there's Gaelic football and there's hurling hurling is a little bit like lacrosse and baseball and you play on a field that's similar to soccer as well, but okay. a bit bigger as well and more. So players. growing up as a as a child, you you, you we would you, yeah, you were pretty much sports were a, plays a those sports huge yeah. part of your childhood. Yeah, sticking with activities, 
but uh, it's 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 an about an activity that you enjoy. Question thirty four is where is a good place to do an activity that you have enjoyed uh, doing in Ireland? I would say as as a child growing up, my home was about a hundred meters away from a golf course. Okay. So I would go out and play on that golf course when it wasn't busy. Yeah. Um, and now golf traditionally is a it's a is a Scottish game. Yep. But it's uh, I mean, but obviously Ireland and Scotland share a lot in culture and right. sports, and it's just as big in Ireland and. You can find some courses that are just as uh, famous as like St. Andrews in Scotland right. and so okay. on. Moving into question 35, people watching. Mm. Uh, this is one of my favorite activities actually. Right. Where would you say is a good place to go people watching in, in Ireland? Well, in Dublin city center, yeah. on the south side, quite close to Trinity College that I mentioned before, okay. there's a pedestrianized street which means no cars can go on that street mm -hmm. it's called Grafton Street and it's a uh, it's the most famous shopping street in Dublin it has like their department stores and so on so Grafton Street is a great street it's also if you've seen any movies about Ireland where there are buskers buskers are musicians who play on the street mm -hmm. and people generally throw money into a hat yeah. and so on. Uh, that's the most famous street for busking. You'll, you'll, by walking the length, it takes about 15 minutes and you'll encounter 10 or 20 buskers if it's a nice sunny day. Uh, so that's an awesome street. And right at the end of that street, there's a park, which is smack bang in the middle of the center. It's called St. Stephen's Green. And that's also a place where people go just to eat lunch or just lie down in the sunshine and read a book. Stephen uh, with a PH? That's right. Yeah. That's the only Stephen we have in our country. In fact, I like it already. December 26th, which is Saint called Stephen's Boxing Day, Day yeah. in Britain, is called St. Stephen's Day in That's Ireland. That's right. So, yeah, St. Stephen. My namesake. Big, big in our country. Good. Don't Good know what to he, hear. Don't know what he Good did, but he must have done something important. Well, he's the first the martyr. There he is. Yeah. He got a good day. He got the second best day. Yeah. Okay, and believe it or not, this is already Unit 8. And it is about music, pop culture, and famous people, all of which Ireland has many. Um, well, let's start with question 36. What kinds of music are popular in Ireland? Um, we have our own kind of music, yes. which is called Irish music, yeah. and what some people would call traditional music. Can you tell us um, a little bit about that? It involves uh, several, the more the merrier, several musicians all playing together in concert. Um, we would have one or two guitarists, a mm. banjo player, um, a drummer called uh, the drum that's used is called a bowron, is the traditional drum, which is a, a calf skin stretched over and it's a <coughs> vertical kind of drum. Um, a fiddle player, fiddle is like a smaller violin mm -hmm. and produces a sound uh, similar to that. We would have maybe a, an accordion player in there. Yeah. Um, another traditional instrument is the spoons, which okay. is just two spoons you can take yeah. them right out of your cutlery drawer and bang them off your knee in your hand and you can get a good sound out of those um, and of course the flutes the flutes yeah the flutes are in there we could we have the short tin whistle and then also the longer flute right. as well so it I mean it, it's probably our version of like folk music yeah question 37 what famous people are from Ireland can you give us maybe one that has passed and one that is still alive? Well, um, Ireland, I think what most Irish people are proud of is that for a small population, we've probably punched above our weight in terms of producing artists. Mm -hmm. And by artists, I'll include uh, writers, right? yeah. people who paint, people who make things. Um, so among writers, and probably to your audience, James Joyce yeah, would be uh, among the most famous. He is uh, Heavy very hitter. popular for his novel Ulysses, which is uh, at the 
top of most people's lists of books they want to read but never will. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so he's probably he's probably the most famous dead Irishman. Maybe W. B. Yeats, who's uh, a poet. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. He was also. Uh, regarded as one of the the best poets maybe ever okay. um, and certainly in our history he is the best poet uh, among the living among the living one or two um, famous actors such as Liam Neeson mm. who was in Taken and uh, Star Wars and a few other movies yeah. uh, singers such uh, or bands such as Westlife Boyzone are probably uh, known to younger audience, mm. um, the Cranberries are mm. also famous yeah, for lovely, their music. Lovely. The most famous band to come out of Ireland are called U2. Right. Uh, they've like at one stage in the late '80s, early 1990s, they were probably the biggest rock and roll band in the world yeah. at that time. Okay, um, question 38 is about the president or the leader. Who is the current president or leader of Southern Ireland? The current president is a guy called Michael D. Higgins. Michael D. Higgins. Yeah, um, but I should mention that in Ireland, the presidential position is a little bit more of a honorary position okay it doesn't really carry any strong power there's no sort of uh, it can't make laws or mm -hmm. anything like that it's so it's so it, who it, carries the power the, the the person who carries the power is the prime minister who we call in our language we call him the Taoiseach 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 yeah and who um, is the the current Taoiseach is Leo Varadkar he became Taoiseach about six months ago, like around... And he's Irish. He's, he's Irish. Irish. He's the son of an Indian immigrant. Okay, I was going to say, it doesn't sound um, like an Irish name, so... No, it's, it's not an Irish name, so he's the first person, maybe... He, he's certainly, he's the first son of an immigrant mm -hmm. to rise to there be to that position, and I, I think that's a good step forward for Ireland, uh, for a country that has been very homogenous in the yeah. past. Okay, Owen, question 39. Subcultures. Are there any unique subcultures that are popular in Ireland these days? Um, I would say, like, amateur fighting has always been a subculture in Ireland. Like, when I was young, it was boxing. We have a strong history going back in the Olympics mm -hmm. for amateur boxing. And in recent years, because of the emergence of Conor McGregor right. in mixed martial arts and the UFC and mm. his fight in 2017 with Floyd Mayweather, uh, he has crossed, become crossed in he, yeah he crossed MMA from boxing to MMA. Boxing. So I, I think because of his success and he is the everyman. He, he started out like not many years ago, he was unemployed and he's now a millionaire and he really it's all down to his dedication and his hard work and he also... And determination he, and... He also must have kissed the Blarney Stone because he definitely <laughs> has the <laughs> gift of the gab. Um, <laughs> as if you watch, that, if you watch any of his interviews, I think a lot of people love him for it. I mean, he does. He has a very unique uh, style yeah. of speech and fashion style, and just the way he carries himself. Unique. Owen, number forty. This is it. It's, it's gone very quickly. Has it? It has. Question 40. Uh, what is the national flower of Ireland? Does Ireland have a national flower? Well, we have the shamrock. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the shamrock? So a shamrock, uh, most people have probably heard of the four-leaf clover. Yeah, which shamrock is lucky. Would, be, would be like a three-leaf clover. Mm -hmm. um, it grows quite commonly in Ireland um, and it has become the main symbol of Ireland. I mean, uh, I, I, taught, I spoke earlier about how green is our mm -hmm. national color. Yeah. The shamrock is on every sort of merchandise you can buy. If you buy an Irish t-shirt or an Irish 
a wristband or a fridge magnet mm. it will have the shamrock on it um, and what is the significance what 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 does the shamrock signify do you know some people thought it because of the the three leaves mm -hmm. to it uh, that it was a Christian thing where it represented the God the, the Trinity yeah the Trinity the the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit um, most people just like to think of it as a, a nice sort of simplistic sort of icon so how do you say thank you in Gaelic you say Gurev Mahagut Gurev Mahagut close enough close enough yeah all, all right. right good enough for me it's my pleasure all right Thank you very much, and I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video. And until next time, my name is Stephen Walker, and this is 40 Questions. Bye-bye.